everyone welcome back in this video we'll be discussing about the last problem of today's biweekly contest ways to express an integer as sum of powers uh, the problem is a bit easier than the usual lead code last problem of uh, weekly or biweekly contest if you are following this channel for some time i am very sure you will be able to solve this problem by yourself so if you haven't tried it yet i would strongly encourage you to pause and try to solve the problem by yourself so with that let's get started the problem states that you are given two positive integers n and x you need, to, you need to return the number of ways n can be expressed as the sum of xth power of unique positive integers. So in other words, you need to find out the number of distinct set n1 to nk such that n will be equals to n1 power x plus n2 power x all the way up to nk power x. Notice that you are given n and x, right? So this is like since the answer can be very huge, you will return is modulus 10 to the power n plus 7. Now, Let's take an example. Let's say n is 10 and x is 2. It means you have to figure out the number of ways in which you can get a sum of 10 by summing up some squares, right? So there's only one possible way, which is summing up 3 square plus 1 square, and that will give you 10. Because there's just one possible way in which you can sum up some squares to get 10, the answer here is 1. Similarly, let's take one more example, which is where n is 4 and x is 1. So it means you have to find out the sum numbers which if you raise power 1 and sum them all up they will give 4 so there are two possible ways one is you get 4 so 4, four power 1 is equal to 4 and second is 3 and 1 so you get 3 power 1 plus 1 power 1 which you sum them it will come to 4 so because there are only two ways to achieve this the answer here is 2 so hope the problem statement is clear now how to solve this so let's say x is 2, right, and n is 10, for example. Now you need to figure out the number of ways in or number of distinct set of n1, n2, n3, all the way up to nk. Now think about it, what can be the value of n1? Value of n1 can be 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, right? n1 can be anything, right? Now let's say you pick n1 as 2, just an example, right? So you pick n1 as 2. Now, if n1 is n1 is equals to 2, then what will be the value of 2 to the power x? 2 to the power x will be 2 power 2, which is 4, right? So this will be 4. So in other words, what we are saying is, you have to get a sum of 6 with the remaining set of integers. So isn't this problem exactly similar to the problem that we are trying to solve originally? Originally, we were saying that we need to express 10 as some number of distinct sum of some num some distinct numbers to the power x now we are saying that we need to express 6 as sum of some numbers some distinct numbers to the power x right so because this pro these two problems are exactly similar we can take advantage of recursion right so let's just say that we have a recursive function f which will take in a value and which will give us the result or in other words, we, it, it will say how many distinct ways are there to form V by summing up some numbers to the power X, right? So you will call like the, your answer to this problem would be the value of F, and F of 10, right? So let's just try to formalize what F would look like. So if you try for N1 first, so let's say we, we are trying to find f of 10. So if you are trying to find f of 10, you have to first figure out what's the value of n1. So there are three possible values of n1 for this f of 10, 1, 2, and 3. Because x is 2, if you take n1 as 4, this value would be 16, and which is already greater than 10. So you will not be able to get a sum of 10 with 16. So that's where we have three different values, 1, 2, and 3. And if you put one here, you will say that, okay, I need number of ways in which I can represent nine as the square of some numbers, uh, sum of square of some numbers. Let's say it comes out to be some x1, right? And uh, if you put two as n1, you will say number of ways in which I can get sum of squares of some numbers as six. So let's say you get x2. So notice that these are f's. So because the recursive function, you already 
like trust what this f will give you the correct value so for f of 10 you already trust that f of 9 will give you the current value correct value and f of 6 will give you the correct value and similarly f of 1 will give you let's say x3 so your final answer would be x1 plus x2 plus x3 right so that's basically the solution let's try to uh, write the recursive for function itself the function would be very straightforward we will simply be doing what we have seen here for any given value v we will try out every possible uh, first value so we will try out everything between 1 and 300 why 300 because this can be equivalent to n so because n is up to 300 I put 300 here now we will see if we can take this value if we can't take this value at all then we will continue otherwise we will try to find out the number of ways in which I can get the remainder or I can make the remainders value so if value is 0 then we found just sorry if value is 0 the, we found just one way to form this particular uh, value v right so this works but this is not fully correct because the problem asks us to find the unique positive integer set so in this particular problem uh, in this particular solution it may be possible that f of 9 will also choose 1 and will call okay give me the value of f of 8 right it is very well possible so because there will be two ones in this scenario this set or the number of ways that you will be getting through this will not be counted uh, should not be counted in the required result right so basically currently there is no way to understand whether we are repeating numbers or not and because you don't want to repeat numbers you need a way to un you, you need a way to make sure that you are not repeating numbers so the easiest way would be to just add one more state here which is an array which will give you what all numbers you have already taken and based on that you can decide whether to take that number again or not so you can simply modify this particular thing to something like this instead of just value you can take an array of taken array so this will give you what all numbers you have already taken so whenever you will take something you will push it to the taken array and pass it along as well now when you are checking or when you are trying to iterate over all possible value for a given ni you will first check whether the value that you are trying to assign to one of these ni's is uh, already present in taken or basically is already assigned to some of the ends before if it is you will not take that again so with this simple modification the we have taken care of the constraint that the values should be unique and this solution is correct now what is the time complexity of this particular solution time complexity is exponential here how I would encourage you to pause and try to think of the time complexity of this particular solution by yourself so the answer is straightforward you you assuming that you will memoize it you will not be computing the value of one state again and again so the time complexity would simply be number of states multiplied by what you are doing in each state so in each state you are running a for loop that will run up to 300 iteration or in other words up to n so you for each state you are doing a work of order n time now how many states are there number of states would be number of distinct values of val multiplied by number of distinct values of taken so number of distinct values of val can again be n right so now what is the number of distinct value of taken so what is taken taken is an array right and you have to figure out how many distinct value of this array can be possible so to figure out how many distinct value of this array is possible you can simply multiply by multiply number of distinct value of each position so you can say how many distinct value zeroth position can take how many distinct values first position can take how many distinct value second position can take and so on and so forth and you multiply them all up to get the to, to get the worst case distinct number of values of taken array so each of these indexes can go all the way up to 300 because these indexes are nothing but what you are filling in right so you can fill these values with 300 at max so each of these indexes can go all the way up to 300 so if you think about it the total distinct value of taken or the number of possible distinct value of taken in worst case could be 300 to the power 
number of indexes and how many indexes will be there again in worst case it can be 300 so 300 to the power 300 which is n to the power n which is exponential which will surely not pass now you need to optimize this so notice that what exactly you want to optimize so you you are fine with this n there is no issue with this n there is no issue with this n as well this taken is something that is giving you a complexity of n to the power n and you want to reduce this so how to reduce this simple uh, you where from this taken comes from or why this taken comes from in the first place the taken comes from because we want to make sure or we want to keep track that a number should not be repeated again right so, and because of that we have taken this taken array so if if what if, if if you want to remove the taken array it simply means we we need to find some other way to figure out that we don't take uh, same element twice so the sort the simplest answer to that would be you take the elements in sorted order either ascending or descending your wish so in other words what we will say that currently this n1 can be 5 n2 can be 4 and n3 can be 2 now because they are in random orders you need a tracker in the form of taken which will keep track of what all things you have taken but if these values are in a particular sorted order for example let's say n1 is 2 and you are very sure that n2 is greater than n1 so you are sure that n1 is greater than n2 uh, n2 is greater than n1 and n3 is greater than n2 and so on and so forth so if you are sure about this correlation then it inherently means that all of these elements are unique you don't need to care about that right or in other words you can simply say that if you can say this something like this as well then also all these elements are unique so the idea is straightforward instead of maintaining this array you will maintain what last element you have taken right now let's say we maintain the inequality of uh, less than right so we are saying that the elements will be in ascending order so n1 will be less than n2 n2 will be less than n3 and so on and so forth so what you will be saying that okay if i have picked some element last here i will not pick or i will only pick elements starting from last plus one right so because i am only picking up elements starting from last plus one this inequality is satisfied right and similarly when you will picking when you pick n2 you will be picking n3 only after n2 so basically if n2 is some x you will be picking n3 is starting from x plus 1 right so because of this inequality we are implicitly saying that the elements are distinct and hence we don't need to maintain this taken array and this will also go away so what will be the new time complexity then again a number of distinct a ways to call this function multiplied by what you are doing inside this function so inside this function is still order n because we are iterating from last plus one to n and how many distinct ways to call this function are there number of distinct value of val which is n and number of distinct values of last which is also n so total n square num on n square distinct ways you can call this function and if you do memorization the entire thing would work in order n cube n cube will pass the given time constraint because n is very small here but we can simply we can easily optimize this to order n square so i would strongly encourage you to pause the video and try to optimize this solution to order n square itself so hope you thought about it now again this, we will uh, follow the same strategy which of these n will you be able to remove so first n comes from the fact that you are maintaining what value you need to make second n comes from the fact that you want last so that you can maintain this inequality somehow and third n comes from the fact that you are iterating over everything between last plus one and n inside each state so removing these two first n is not straightforward because you need something to make sure to tell you what how many or how much sum is left you need something to make sure that the elements are not repeated so if you want to do the time complexity the simplest way could be to think of how we can remove this n now removing this n means we don't need to iterate over all the numbers now what we are doing inside this for loop let's say you have pick a, you have picked n1 already and you have, you got some last now for inside this for loop you are trying to finalize what could be n2 right that's what you are doing so you are saying that n2 can be last plus 1 
or last plus two or last plus three all the way up to n right now this like uh, there are there is one simple way to say exactly the same statement so because you know that the elements would be greater than this element last you can say either n2 can be last plus one or n2 cannot be last plus one that's the only two things possible if n2 is last plus one your job is done you will say okay I've, i found n2 i will now try n3 right if n2 is not last plus one in that case what you will say uh, i will if n2 is not last plus one i will figure out the value at val comma last plus two right in other words you will say that okay n2 is not last plus one and because n2 needs to be greater than n1 i am very sure that it is greater than last so it is greater than last it is not it is not equals to last plus one it means the value of n2 is greater than equals to last plus two so instead of this last you can simply update this last to last plus two and that will solve the given problem right so instead of uh, finding out the exact n2 here you can simply say either n2 will be last plus one or it will not be last plus one and saying that will reduce the time complexity uh, drastically by order n basically inside this for loop you are just saying so this is this can be either start or last whatever you call it and uh, inside this for loop you will say either n2 is start or n2 is not start so if n2 is not start you will simply say that okay figure me number figure out the number of ways to form this well with any number starting from start plus one if n2 is start then you will say because n2 is start i know that this is now the remaining sum so figure out how many ways are there how many distinct ways are there to form this particular sum starting from this particular number right and uh, because we are doing constant operations inside this and number of states is still order n square the entire complexity is order n square so hope this entire solution with the thought process is clear uh, the code is very straightforward the code uh, we are doing exactly the same thing that you discussed we have these two things start and val we will check if start is greater than 300 we will simply return 0 because we know that the value itself is less than 300 because n is up to 300 so we will simply return 0 in this case otherwise we will check the cache if value if this state is something we have already calculated we will simply return it otherwise we will uh, figure out whether it is possible to take this start as the value of the cur as a value or not so for that we just calculated the value of start to the power x and if that value is less than equals to well you can take that so we'll just sum them up if uh, it is not you there is no possible like well is not possible at all or start is not possible at all in the current position and second choice is you will not put start at all you will uh, you will skip start and say that the numbers will start from start plus one right now the val the value function is straightforward we are just multiplying the same number x number of times and uh, one small thing that we have done is we break out early because we don't want to deal with uh, long integers and other things so we just say if result is greater than 300 it means we have already closed n and because we have already closed n this condition would already be satisfied or this condition will never be satisfied and because of that we will never be executing this statement at all so that's where if result itself is, 300, is greater than 300 we'll simply return some greater number than 300 so hope this entire solution makes sense if you have any doubts in any of the approaches feel free to post them in the comments below i will have to answer one small follow-up could be uh, notice that the the arrangement 3 comma 1 is equals to the arrangement one comma three right so these three are the equal these three are these two are considered as equal sets so a follow-up could be what if they are dif different how will you modify this entire algorithm to solve this particular problem so the solution is very straightforward i would not dive deep into solution yet 
uh, if you want to discuss we can discuss that in the comment section below so if you like the video give it thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one thank you